All right, so what we've got here is a DOS XL sound box. These are one of the highest rated, best portable speakers that you can buy for a really cheap price. They're like 70 bucks um, shipped. I mean, they're really inexpensive. And they have really high reviews because they have a, an exorbitant amount of bass for the size and compared to other little portable speakers um, you know, around. Now, this thing is big. I wear an extra long, large glove and you can see how actual large this thing is. I bet it weighs probably three pounds or something. It's pretty heavy, uh, maybe two pounds. But anyways, um, I had one of these fail and DOS had excellent customer service. They sent me one. And what my symptoms were is the unit just wouldn't power on. And eventually it started going into this power loop where it'd power up and power off and power up and power off. And it just drove you insane because it has power up and power down tone. So it was just doing it by itself. About every 15 minutes, it would just go through this cycle. And anyways, DOS was awesome. They sent me a free replacement and they didn't want the other one back, the failed one back. And I hate throwing things away that, you know, might be able to be fixed. So I took a, took a look inside and I found in that this thing actually, the fix for it for, for my needs was very, very simple. Um, let me open it up or show you guys how to open it up and then I'll get to what I did to fix it so that it's usable again. All right, so I've got our DOS speaker here and we're gonna disassemble it. So what I'm using um, first up is just a jeweler screwdriver. Just a flathead, and we got to get the grill off. Um, so we're going to kind of press in really hard on the grill. And we're going to pry it up. Thing actually comes apart very, very easily. Not much to it. There we go. Cool. Got our grill off. Now we have the speaker assembly itself. It's got a little. A little uh, kind of high high throw wolfer here and then we got these two little two inch um, kind of mid-range or full range drivers for the mids and highs and that's all there is to it and of course you got two passive radiators down here so I'm gonna just gonna be taking a standard Phillips and we got six six screws that we have to take out actually use the screen, the grill, as a tray. Let's see if I can get this first screw out. Come on. These are magnetic tip screwdrivers, but I think this one's losing its magnetism. Anyways, yeah, so we got a bunch of screws we gotta take out here. I think we got 12 in total. And then I'll show you how to get the unit opened. Now this unit I've already worked on. I've already repaired it. And I'm gonna show you, I've got another one over here to my right, one of the, the one that DOS sent me. It's a part because I'm gonna be doing some, another video here in a few weeks when a bunch of little two inch uh, full range drivers come in. Cause I'm gonna be trying different speakers in this to see if I can improve on the mid range and, and highs of this little guy. Cause it is, it is just very, very, in my opinion, kind of bass heavy and bloated sounding, um, which is a lot of fun. It's very musical for most music. People are gonna, gonna really like this thing. Um, like I said, it sounds kind of, to my ears, it sounds a bit bloated. And I believe that has to do with the DSP that's in the unit. It, it's using a, amplifier slash DSP chip to power it and in that little DSP if you are the designer you can program in a curve basically a five band parametric curve along with some other effects and in my opinion what they've done is is uh they boosted the bass so much that it just it almost makes it sound a little bit muddy to me so I'm going to be changing out little two inch drivers here in a few weeks and doing some measurements and see if this little cheapie can be improved. Now, what I do to get this out, because it is wedged into this case, um, you can kind of be careful, but you can push the passive radiator down to catch just your fingers right under the lip. And this is very thick rubber, by the way, you're not gonna hurt it. But you can just kind of reach under that passive radiator like that, and the other side, and you're out. 
All right, and you can lift off the top assembly. You can see the foam here that actually wedges it in. That's kind of why it sticks. Now again, this is a repaired unit. Uh, let me stop the camera for just a second, and I'm going to show you what one looks like um, completely stock with its battery pack, and then what my repaired unit looks like and what I had to do to make it work. So I'll be right back. All right, so this is a unit that I haven't touched. This is a brand new unit, one from DOS. You can see the battery pack here. It's just got this little foam padded cable that goes around to the circuit board and plugs in right here. Now, what I found on these units is you can't just remove the battery pack. If the battery pack fails, you can't just remove it and have the unit work. Um, it is a 2S18650 uh, battery pack with a little BMS in it. And on my one that failed, what I found is the BMS board for the battery, which is a circuit board on, under this plastic wrapper, had failed. And it no longer had any power output. I did verify both cells were good, but the BMS had failed. So one approach would be to simply put another 2S battery pack in it. That would be fine. You can do that. But I don't use these as portable speakers. They're so big, it almost, to me, doesn't make sense to use as a portable speaker. I don't want to lug this thing around. It's big. So what I did, is you can see here, this one, the battery pack's just gone. It's missing. I just unplugged it. Now, as I mentioned a second ago, um, you can't just do that and have the unit work because it needs to sense the voltage. I'm setting this other speaker over here. It needs to sense voltage um, in order to function on the battery pins. So it won't power up basically without the battery attached. Let me kind of just bend this down. You can see the nice large magnet for the size speaker that is there on the sub. But what I did, if you can see it here, the quick and easy fix, and this works very, very well, there's no adverse effects or anything, is just run two jumper wires. So the black wire here, if you can see it, is just soldered to that contact right there. Runs around into the negative pin on the battery input lead. Now the blue wire is positive and it runs around and connects to the positive lead. Now all I did is, if this is actually the connection for the, the power input jack. All that does is just jumper power directly to the battery pin. So when you turn this on, it thinks there's a battery there, even though it's higher voltage than a 2SL. It's uh, 2SL, I think it's seven point something volts, two volts. But um, it's 12 volt input, but all those pins need to do is see power and the unit will fire right up and work no problem. So if you wanna get rid of your battery pack, um, that's what you gotta do. If you want to uh, replace your battery pack, you need to get another 2S battery pack. And those are the pins that you're going for. Or, I mean, they're 69 bucks. They're not that expensive. You could buy another one, but I, I just, I don't like doing that. And I hope uh, more of you just repair stuff at home because really that's like a 25 cent fix and it took me a whole about 10 minutes to figure out. So if you want your DOS XL sound box to work again, if it's got a no power up state, I imagine it may be the battery. This board is very basic and very well built and the processor chip that it uses is pretty darn reliable. It's got really good reviews. So that may be your fix. Just run some jumpers and you are done. Um, again, here in a couple uh, couple of weeks, I'm going to be changing out drivers and trying to tune this little sound box to sound a little bit better. I have no way to control the DSP that's in here or the EQ, so I'm just working with what it has. And uh, we'll see if a little bit higher efficiency, uh, two inch mid-range drivers um, in different designs. I've got about three different designs coming in that will be drop in. We'll see if those actually improve the sound or improve the frequency response because right now to my ears it sounds like it cuts off about 12,000 hertz, maybe 14 at the very, very most. It just does not have a lot of frequency response to the little box, but it is musical. I mean, it does fill a room with music and it has a lot of bass for its size. Um, anyways, yeah, that's it. I hope this helps some of you guys if you want to fix your little XL sound boxes and uh, I will catch you in a few weeks when I do some mods and testing on this thing, see if I can actually make it sound better than it does now.